Hey guys, this is Winmaster. Welcome back to the long-awaited Fire and Fates characters tops. Now, like with Awakening, it's going to be seven for the parent side and seven for the children's side. Now, let's get some ground, quick ground rules out the way. One, the royals don't count because I made a separate video about that. Go watch that. Two, Anna and the Amiibo don't count because, well, I have not bought uh, Anna's DLC, nor do I want to, and I don't have any of the Fire Emblem Amiibo, so they don't count. Next, the, you know, the characters that you capture don't count because they, I don't really know what you play as them. Speaking of, next, the, there will be, there are a lot of characters that I don't use or characters that don't support the avatar. With one exception, I will not mention about them. So, I don't care how good their personalities are, for like example, Scarlet, but I am not mentioning her at all because I don't use Scarlet. And neither of the other characters only support the avatar, with one exception. Uh, similarly to the no royals rule, I will mention the royal children, just not yet. This is it. There's going to be a royal child on this list, and he's really the, the exception, really. So if he wasn't a royal child, he'll still be in this list. Uh, next, just going to say right now, I am quite biased towards uh, conquest characters, especially with the royals. Uh, but I do have a lot of favorite characters from there, so that's kind of a just so you know, bias thing. Uh, next, it actually was quite hard for me to pick out the, the seventh character on the parent side, because that was kind of like a five-way tie, but I've uh, actually decided on one. But I'm going to talk about a few of the others elsewhere on video. And finally, and I'm going to start off this list with an honorable mention. And this honorable mention is a non-playable character, but this non-playable character, from what I've seen on me or whatever, that is probably some sort of future DLC which involves you being a play, play as his character. So let's just start this right now. The honorable mention is Mikoto, which is the Avatar's mom. Now, uh, she's quite a great uh, plot device. I find that she has a really good uh, plot device where Everything sets off due to the the mom's death, and she's quite hot. I'm gonna leave it right, I'm gonna leave it right now. I'm gonna leave it there. I'm just gonna leave it there. Uh, she's beautiful, and like just having seen your mom die, you know you only like saw her for like what a few days tops. Uh, so it's actually quite heart wrenching for the avatar just you know having to see his mom die in his hands. By the sword he was carrying at the time, just really going bonkers. It's 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 insane, and it definitely would drive someone to turn into a dragon for the first time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she's a great, 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 great plot device, and does serve as uh, you know main thing to main, like main drive to go through the rest of e any of the paths. All right, that's it for Mikoto. So. Uh, I guess now it's time for the list proper. Okay, for the parent side, number seven is Setsuna. Now, okay, now I chose Setsuna for seven, even though it was actually a four-way tie, but Setsuna not there. But I uh, decided to go Setsuna because, well, one of the characters that were a tie is similar to another character on this list. Make that two, but uh, this another one is related to another character on on that list, so I'm gonna turn that character later. And the other two was kind of hard, just kind of a hard to decide, really. So, why Setsuna? Well, and the weird thing about Setsuna is that I, like, on Birthright, I never used her. At all. To the point that I, like, it was like on the bottom of my, you know, you know, when you go to your, your characters or your inventory or support or whatever, she's right there on the, on the bottom row. I never use her, because, like, I have Takumi. And Takumi is like a, a pretty effective archer, so why do I need not? Why do I need another? Uh, and plus, it was really hard for her to support anyone, 
because uh, I've already supported every male character I can uh, up to this point before going to Setsuna, so it's really hard. However, what set her apart was two things. One, kind of like, um, you know, kind of co convenience thing, and then two, because of uh, how uh, an interesting support that she can have. Now, the first one is that my birthright avatar is a bow knight. Well, technically it's like mercenary class, but I, I learned something bow knight, never turned into a hero. But uh, she's a bow knight class, and I, may I want to make my birthright avatar more effective with bows than anything. So, and since there's only one other character who's an archer class to, to get to um, A plus support to become an arch, to a sniper, so I said, you know what, I'm gonna go support Setsuna because, like, it's. Like, it's probably gonna be only used for the entire game for like so might as well. In that time, I learned quite a bit of who like the Setsuna's personality and how she is uh, kind of the character that just wa just walks into traps because it's just because a thing that she likes to do apparently. I actually thought that she does it unintentionally, just bad luck. It turns out I read in, on the weekend like, on this character that she just does it intentionally. Uh, so it's like, what the heck, Setsuna? So, yeah, she walks into the traps just willing, just because she just likes it. Um, but again, when I and then when I go to Revelation and I looked at uh, who she can support, turns out she can support with Niles. And then I thought to myself, dude, Niles can have uh, Niles and um and uh, Nina can become an archer class and the out Ar outlaw class at the same time. So probably uh, help her with, with their with their base classes. So I did that. So I you know did the supports and stuff with uh, Setsuna and and uh, Niles. Kind of like their support. They're pretty neat. Uh, and then notice how like slow she is. Like by slow I mean she is not bright. And like when you like um, you go bond with Setsuna on the um, the the. For the castle, she speaks so slowly, like someone who just doesn't have anything up there, if you know what I mean. I don't know why, that kind of makes her a bit charming. But that she's, like, quite different in that way, that she's just not that bright up there. And, I don't know, I kinda, I kinda, that's why I kind of like it over other characters. Now, um, I believe I did not mention, okay, so I, I'm gonna mention it now about a character named Rinka. Uh, who was going to be the number seven on the slide if it wasn't for Setsuna. However, the reason why I would chose Rinka is because I actually do use Rinka through the door, through pretty, most of the game. But the problem I have to find with Rinka is that she's quite sucky. She's actually not good. Even after supporting her with Charlotte to give her axe fair for her base class, she doesn't have enough strength. I paired her I paired her with Kaze, and Kaze the second ninja is so much stronger than her. Like what the heck? Uh, and plus I kind of like the fact that she's the only character with white hair, and she gives, you know, children the white hair. It's awesome. Uh, I don't know, I, like, I don't also like her attire, uh, with, with the weird Oni mask, and, uh, you know, those, those, those weird bandages and stuff. But, uh, while I do like Rika's design, I, like, personality-wise, she's just kind of doesn't want to talk, and uses, uses wise she's just not that, effect, that effective, not as I wanted her to be. All right, we can move on from that because already wow, we passed eight minutes and I barely started this list. No more messing around. As expected. For the child number seven, Calderi. Now, what the heck, Pikmin? Like, um. If you're if you've seen some of my earlier uh, bottom face videos, what the heck, Pikmin, should be your first question. It's like, okay, whatever. So, like, I didn't really care that much until I look at my toy. And here it is. Gee, I wonder if this looks familiar. And then, freaking the Avatar... Can marry that, can marry that Cordell lookalike, and then things get insane. What even? Um, when, like, right now I've already decided, uh, like, my revolu my revelation waifu. But I'm not exactly decided on Conquest or Birthright. What the heck? 
Kale Dory. That's a dumb. That's a really weird name. Oh great, it's gonna be my waifu. It's gonna be hard to actually pronounce it. Just go to Kale or Dory. And then my answer, I can't really explain that much. Cause the thing is that I thought I'm gonna have Kaldori as my revelation waifu, but I just stopped midway through Birthright. I just like uh, like uh, went a different direction with Birthright. Um, uh, granted, not I, I didn't marry Kaldori in Birthright because my my player character is as a female, but. The point is that it is entirely due to her support with Asagi that turned me off. Um, so, so here's the thing. Cordelia, let's go to Cordelia for a sec, back in freaking Awakening. That uh, she really is, doesn't, she's not a perfectionist, like she's trying to be a bit of a perfectionist, but she really just is not really, um, not entirely demanding of people. Just, 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 just doesn't, like, doesn't entirely show the faults of others. With exceptions, I guess. But overall, she doesn't forcefully, uh, you know, ask people to be like professionalists. Perfectionists. Meanwhile, Tsubaki, who I wanted to be on this list before, you know, if it, if it wasn't for, you know, me actually playing in game, Tsubaki would have been up there on this list due to having a daughter who was like Cordelia. But the point is that he is a perfectionist really because he can. And, well,. He, even though he tries to be this perfect gentleman, the, the, the best soldier ever, but he has a lot of supports that he just isn't. He isn't perfect, but he wants to be this high and mighty man. But in the end, he knows that he's not perfect and he'll have to deal with it. That's fine and all, but it just makes it kind of a douche sometimes. However, Calgary is the story. Um, I have not supported anyone except Asagi at this point, because, um, in Birthright, I married her to Asagi, and, and, in, and in Revelation, I haven't even blocked her yet. Yeah, just, 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 I'll get back to the, that a bit later. But, um, in that support of Asagi, she is demanding of him to, you know, clean up whatever messes he made. So it's kind of, sort of like, um, uh, a perfectionist, but wants others to be perfect. Heck, even in, on the... When you bond with with Calvary, I'm just calling her Cal, because I call her Cal from from, from you know from the time Sabaki uh, pronounced her name correctly. So even on that, she is kind of like some acting demanding. So I'm like, girl, you you I can't believe it. You broke the chain. I can't believe you broke the chain that I wanted. Like, I, like, here's what I want. I wanted, like, me and, uh, Awakening Me and Cordelia to have, like, what, a great-granddaughter or something. The great-granddaughter, Kana, that is just, like, you didn't, you didn't make it work. You, you turned it off. What the heck, girl? So, in Birthright, what I did is I paired out Tsubaki with Rinka. Because having her with white hair is just, I don't know, kind of amazing. I don't know, maybe just me. I mean, sure, I kind of uh, paired up the with my female avatar to have her, like, straight-up blue hair to be more like freaking Lucena, but, um, I chose not to. Uh, but the white hair looks, looks pretty cool uh, on Calvary. Uh, but, yeah, Calvary broke it. Calvary stopped being my revelation waifu. It's insane. She didn't become my waifu. That's why she's this long and slick, because she just broke the chain. She maybe not like her. What the heck? I mean, granted, I still like her, but that's kind of comparative sense. Six. The character I actually married in Revelation, Laura. So, while I said the exceptions for cat that, cat that don't support with anyone but the Avatar, Flora is the exception. And, it's kind of, kind of a um, semi-last minute reason for why she's my waifu. Um, is that when I locked her in Conquest, I was like, whatever. And then finished the game, like, as is. But, um, I decided, hey, um, just want to look at where her job classes are. And she, she ends up having four abilities that... 
four breaker abilities. I'm just like, okay, I want to see what that's about. So I support. Her, so I started out to started training up uh, Flora and get this. So in story, so no, 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 that is in story and in in actually playing her. It become evident that she's basically. I can't believe I can't say this. She is pre that song Elsa, and that al that description alone, I was like, waifu. Like I, I like screw Calder at this point. Flora is gonna be my revelation waifu, because she is basically pre that song Elsa. No wonder am my pre that song Elsa. Well, I said Elsa. Like first, when you think Elsa, first thing you mind is Disney's Elsa. And then when I said that song. Well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say the name of that song because you know you, you're probably thinking it right now, and or probably listening to it on YouTube or whatever. But in Frozen, Elsa wasn't always the kind of character you see on the marketing. So she so ended up being a character I liked, but that song kind of a made me realize why her powers are it is as is, and b. It makes sense in, in story and in character, but makes him kind of like her a bit less. So, pre that song, Elsa, is this kind of reserved girl, kind of a reserved girl who like not doesn't exactly want doesn't want to be associated with others, but just has this urge to like she wants to um, associate with others, but due to circumstances or by whatever reason she just can't because. Both, because both Flora and Elsa have ice powers that are based on emotions. So if just think Starfire from the Teen Titans show, but replace Star Bros or whatever with ice. Uh, and I, and that cast was like, oh, yeah, I kind of kind of do like Flora, and I don't know, just Flora while 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 becoming my revelation waifu, I just like this makes more and more sense to me. This shit makes more sense to me than freaking Camilla. I don't know why. It's just like, it makes more sense to me. So, I decided two things. One, to go to Revelation Childless. And two, to marry Flora. So, so yeah, that's kind of the big deal what I have with the children characters. Is that I went through the entire relation without using any of the children characters. Heck, I've only I've only did like four power was it four paralogs or five before going the chapter just before the final battle and I just like didn't use them at all. So I so I didn't have any exposure to Calderi in uh, Revelation. So she can't she couldn't be my waifu. All right, so uh, I think that's it. That's what what almost ten another, another eight minutes of me talking about one character. This is gonna take forever. <laughs> Next. For Chun characters is Sophie. Now I think Sophie can be easier to explain, cause child character don't bear, bear ever. But whatever. Sophie. Um, it's mostly I don't know. It's mostly due to her and their antics and relationship with her horse, whose name's Avil. Avil with a V, not a B. Big difference. I pronounce my name Abel. And, <laughs> but whatever. Point aside. Um. Uh, like the whole antics between Sophie and her horse, and like how a horse doesn't really obey her at all. <laughs> if you think of in Pokemon, you know, in Pokemon, where you get a super high level, po super high level Pokemon, and you get traded from this, this this one guy, and however it turns out, they doesn't obey you because he's too high of a level. That that is that is um, Sophie and her horse in a nutshell. And once when Sophie gets more confident, whatever, gets an A plus support with her dad. Um, which is Silas, uh, her horse starts to obey her a bit more. And I think same thing with her supports with Kana Mail, which I which I made her support with. Uh, they, they, they ends up, uh, that she ends up like getting a lot better, so the horse actually um, lets her tame him or whatever. So it's, it's kind of it's like Pokemon, in a way. Um, now, 
thing the thing that about either I used her in Birthright because I couldn't use her in Conquest because there were not enough female characters for all the male characters to support. That's all I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave it at that. Because I played as a male avatar and I did and I didn't marry Flora. So there were not a lot of uh, female characters for the male characters to marry, so I had um uh, Kazi just be standalone. I think him was one of the characters, but I forgot it was. Um, on the other side, uh, on the other side of the conflict, uh, I did get Sai to marry, but it's another character that I, that, um, didn't marry, another male character did marry, but I can't tell you who it is because that's actually a spoiler thing. And so he nor his kid are on this list, most of them don't care, don't care about his kid, and I can't talk about the, 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 the father character, these spoilers. How the mighty have fallen! The man, the great theatrical awesomeness, Mr. Flameclaw Wyvernborn, the foe slayer himself, Odin slash Owain. What the heck happened to you, dude? You went all dark mage on me! You went from this awesome sword master, and then you went freaking dark mage out of nowhere, because, what, last year? I mean, yeah, you can still reclass to the Swordmaster, yeah, but now you're kind of a, ma a mage unit. I, I still turn into Swordmaster Revelation, I don't really freaking care. But, um, yeah, Odin slash Owen, he is exactly as you think he was. The catch is that there are characters that I like more than Odin, so, sorry dude, there are people in your way being the third slot like last time so sorry but um, otherwise he's the exact same as the uh, same reason why he is this high on my children's side of awakening list because he's just really fun he's a really a fun dude to talk to <laughs> um he's all theatrical and um and he's all talking about darkness a lot because he comes from odin and dark because he is he is like the master of all things darkness. He, and he says a lot of weird things involving darkness. And just this guy, man. This guy. Um, and Conquest, I don't remember who I married him with. I think I'll oh, married him with Nyx, because that makes sense. And I, uh, well, I th thought it would make sense. However, I, that was me playing my first file. So, how does he know Dark Mage and Dark Mage aren't exactly that good together? Unless he's like reclassed that. Dark Mage did something else. Not, 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 whatever. I did that revelation, but none here. Uh, in Revelation, I married him off to Orochi, who I wanted to be on, on this list, but couldn't, because other characters took her spot. Um, so yeah, I wanted Orochi to be on this list, but what just wasn't. Uh, although I haven't got their their child character just yet in Revelation, because like I said, childless. So there you go, Odin, you're awesome, but you're just fine on this list. Number five, for a children's side, five is Forrest. He is the one royal kid on this list. Now, this guy is really on this list for one reason, and it's not because of him. Well, sort of because of him. But it was actually because of his association with another character on this list. Uh, if you've seen my Miiverse post, you probably have seen spoilers for every single one of these characters, or for why, why I might like them, but the point is that a certain child character also on this list, this uh, forced association with this character is the entire, entire reason why he's on this list. Now, I'm going to talk about Kana and Kiragi, which are two other royal, ch uh, royal children. The, the uh, son slash daughter of the Avatar and the son of Takami. Now, Kana, uh, I find it difficult to put Kana on a list. 
uh, mostly because the one, both of the cons actually act differently, kind of similar to Awake Awakening. And like what we can have prefer the female to the male, mostly because while well, I play the male one, and then the female just too cute, and then, then the, the male the male con is just like, hey, I want to be big and strong, but I can't have slow kid. But whatever, uh, yeah, that's pretty much, much it. And so, Kiragi, I was thinking of putting Kiragi on the list because he has a much better personality than freaking Takami. Kiragi, since I'm not going to mention, since he's not going to be on this list, Kiragi is a skilled hunter and is more skilled in hunting and he's like this expert at looking up in the sky, put like, um, preparing his, writing his bow and shoot down a bird far, far away. And then I managed to support with Shiro, which is his cousin. And he's like, how did you do that? <laughs> oh, Kiragi, I... I, I actually wanted to support him with Salki, but I didn't got to because, you know, I decided to play Revelation instead of with him with Birthrights um, getting every character there. But holy crud, Kiyagi almost hard made a list for how cool he is, um, despite, you know, you know, one, association with Takami, and two, because now I know exposure because everyone else sucks to, sucks to beat him, but whatever. So as I force on this list, I use him way too much because of association with the character. Plus, plus, take Forrest, who is the the girly man of the game, and um, he likes wearing dresses and that sort of thing. But whatever, don't, don't care. What's kind of cool is that despite him wearing dresses, he can normally promote into a, the butler class. Now put him in the butler class. Put him a diff Put in the um, the tinted glasses. Put replace his pink beret with like the with um. Like a, with a prince crown, and boy, he looks freaking stylish as all heck. I'm sexy and I know it. I'm sexy and I know it. This guy has style, and I love it for it. I love him for it. He's like, he's like the dude with Max style. Awesome. Uh, I'm. Oh, uh, by the way, I married his dad Leo to Perry, but that's really not important. Really, it's not important in the long run, so whatever. Justice prevails. For her parents, that is Arthur. Now, Arthur is there for personality alone, unlike. And similar to Odin, I don't use Arthur that much. I had I had super difficulty playing, um, getting Arthur past like the like the middle part of Birthright and Revelation, because like by the time like, by the time the middle uh, I had to get the middle of of Birthright sometime after I got him, he became just like less used and less used because there are a lot more characters I like to use more, and then the children characters came in and holy crud, Arthur just like there really. Um, but in Revelation, I try my best to get him through the entire game. Uh, mostly because of his kid, because I want to get his kid to, um, get certain moves, which I'll talk about, well, right now! Okay, so going through for our children's side, we have Percy, which is Arthur's son. Now, like, so I can, like, like with uh, Cordelia and Severa, I'm going to talk about both of them together because they're both uh, kind of the, both together, kind of in that same spot. Is that Arthur? I, I, I put Percy on this list because I want Arthur to have a son with Percy with six breaker root, breaker skills. Why six breaker skills? We can't five. I don't know. I just kind of feel like a challenge. So what I did was that I, in in Conquest, I paired up Arthur with Felicia. The reason for that is because since they're both kind of unlucky characters, kind of makes sense to put them together. Turns out that th this sets off, this, uh, eventually sets off the whole, oh hey, maybe I can do six breaker, spell, breaker skills on one character, and hey, Felicia already gave him Tone Breaker, so 
And since he naturally gets Axebreaker, let's find a way to, in Revelation, put everything together. So I paired up Arthur with Keaton to give Arthur the Bow Knight class. And I made him marry Kagero, who, pair, who is, um, uh, that character who, who supported with Charlotte, and Charlotte gives, not Charlotte, Rinka, who gives, who uh, Rinka would give uh, Kagero the Lance Breaker, because Rinka is just really exclusive when it comes to that freaking move with Lance Breaker. And so, eventually, I'll give Percy six Breaker spells. I haven't done it yet, I'm at four, but, um, yeah, kind of a kind of cool thing. Now, time for the personality, because the personalities are quite similar. Arthur is like, what do you expect of like 60s Batman? Not 60s Batman, 60s Supes, like 60s Superman? Like, he is this ally of justice, and he will talk like some sort of 60s superhero, or 70s superhero, like 60s superhero. Like these like big important guys are to save the world, you would do all sorts of awesome feats to save, to help people for whatever. Like, this guy, this guy. He is talks like a 60 superhero, maybe even earlier. But the catch is that this guy's unlucky. This guy gets, you know, get you know stuck in the quicksand. He gets you know taken by the rapids. Okay, well, by a waterfall, hit himself with the rocks. Somehow live. Um, also, also the nasty stuff. Meanwhile, his son Percy is his opposite, where he has like the best luck ever, to the point that he casually finds sacks of gold. Like, Psycho gets casually. <laughs> and when I had support with o Ophelia. And oh, and, oh my god, Ophelia's like, How? How? You must be a chosen one! And the person's like, I'm a chosen one? Oh, a chosen one! And then, oh my goodness, and Percy, he's like, If, if I said something for, like, Arthur is like 60s Superman or Batman, Percy is like Robin. With the voice of Pitt! No, seriously, Percy is basically Pit if Pit was a sidekick, a superhero sidekick. Because, like, the same voice actor and the same voice mannerisms, he is totally 100% Pit. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that is freaking awesome. So, yeah, Arthur for his theatric, similar to Odin, except just as much used, I mean, not so much at all. And, and Percy, again, that goes along with Arthur and his little sidekickiness. And. It, like him also want to be an uh this man of justice is it's pretty cool three is sizo oh my goodness sizo now Look at this guy, I can kind of tell his personality. He is that guy. He is that ninja. He's like, he's a ninja. I, d I do whatever I want. I, like, I, I sneak around. I come out of nowhere. It, it's a thing I do. Okay? Deal with it. And, um, he's the character my birthright avatar married. Because, like, he is so freaking cool. Uh, yeah, Saizo's, like, the, the, his really cool character. Um, now I'm gonna talk about Kagero because I talked about Ka uh, character in Kagero with uh, Arthur's spot, but Kagero is similar to uh, Saizo. The reason why I didn't put her on this list, I was going to put her on this list as a seventh slot, uh, taking out Setsuna. However, the reason why I didn't is because she acts similarly to Saizo. Only difference is that while Saizo doesn't care about, uh, doesn't care about what was the word? He doesn't doesn't care about uh, casualties. Kagero does, where it's like we were quite a few of Saizo's supports. Like, why, why, why did you retreat? Uh, we're supposed to beat this guy, but we're, whereas there's the other person's like, uh, we're kind of, kind of need to not die. And then Saizo's like, come on now, come on, now, get over there, and we're gonna die with honor. And then the other, the other character's like, um, no, let, let's not, because life's kind of important, a big deal. So no. Kagero is the, char the character who's like, he's kind of a, he's also a ninja who comes in, in and out whenever she wants. Um, only difference is that Joe's giant Camilla-sized knockers. But, um, 
then there's um both of them and their willingness to uh you know sneak up and um you know dang it sur like sur sur survey the avatar regardless of any circumstance for example i remember when we supporting my female avatar with Saizo that um Saizo said that he'll be watching her every move and then my avatar's like even when especially then <laughs> and then he's like and then she's like my female avatar's like weirded out that oh great this guy's gonna see me when i go pee and si and um kagero sim like kind of similar thing except that she realizes oh wait maybe not when you pee <laughs> I'll I'll just go when you need to when you need to go. So that that's um that's the thing about Kagero. I wanted to put Kagero on this list, but I can't because of this list and Saizo already took number three. So whatever. Now another reason why Saizo's number three is because of Asagi! He is basically Gaius! Only way more of a sweet tooth than Gaius. Where Gaius is just like this normal guy who just happens to have a, just happens to have a thing for sweets. Asagi is a man of sweets. He's like, he will eat any kind of sweet to the point that he's just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bake! Like, screw you guys, like, I got my own candy! Where Saizo hates the taste of candy, Asuki is the like, drowns himself in it to the point that um Ka well as like I said before I paired him up with Calderi and Calderi is like hey God better clean up that stuff and then Asuki the clever B word the clever B A word is that he is the, he just like okay I'll do that Miss like su Sergeant the Joe Sergeant but first hey wanna try this and then um Kyle's like. Uh, no, 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 do your thing. Do your thing, no. Uh, no, don't, don't give me that. Okay, fine, I'll take it. Nom. Oh my god, it's the best thing I've ever tasted. Ever. Make more! Please, make more! It's like, okay, okay. <laughs> oh my goodness, this guy. Not only is he good at, like, you know, being a ninja. He's like, being a thief, really. Being a thief. And he just, like, sneaks around and steals things. But what the else is steal is steals women's hearts. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, for him, the way to a woman's heart is candy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Asagi. Oh, speaking of the name Asagi, in the paralogue where you get Asagi, due to Saizo uh, having like a sort of na like family tradition with his name, so he's actually the fifth in the line of Saizos, uh, he names Asagi Saizo. But Asagi is like, no, and then someone calls him Asagi, and he's like, Asagi, you're Saizo. But Asagi's like, no, I want, I want to be my own man. And then and so I was like, uh, fine, be, be this Asagi, whatever. Sheesh. And then my thoughts immediately go through to male Kana, which, you know, because you know, I married my female avatar with him, I said that several times already. My first thought was male Kana, I was like, I'm going to be the next Saizo. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first thought. It's amazing, but yeah, Asagi, cool guy, um, cool guy and everything. Um, I like this character. He's basically guys, but a lot more crazy and sweet tooth, and Zesh has more more of a kid's voice. That's much it. Next. Number two is Inigo slash Laszlo for exactly the same reasons why I liked him in the previous list involving him. He is basically the Johnny Bravo or Brock of the group. And once again, I freaking love him for it. And once again, freaking conversation between him and Owain, like his deceased support alone cracks me up. Especially on Owain's case. Uh, but then, then again, their their later supports are how them missing, um, missing their homes and 
missing the fact that, oh wait, we have identities back home, yeah, but yeah, identities here, what, what's what? Like, and was I living a dream this entire time? Where I married Severa, and then you, and then, I forgot what he, I forgot what Wayne married. Uh, was it Lucina? I don't, I don't think, no, no, not Lucina. It was someone else. But I forget. Um, I thought someone would remind me. But, uh, point is that, uh, but the thing is that oh, Wayne's like, oh, yeah, we, we had those, but don't you worry, man. Once we're done with this thing, we're gonna go back and then let you relive, or let, like, let you, like, like, remember everything. Isn't that right, Inigo of the Indigo Skies? Oh my goodness, that line. Because, like, uh, he said, he says, uh, Laszlo of the Azor Skies, and then Inigo's like, can okay, we make it an Indigo? And then, and then he acknowledged it later. And then, and then, and then, and then Inigo's like, oh, Inigo, I remember that. I remember that. I haven't used that in a long time. Thanks, Owain. Uh, my god, these two, they, they are, they are, to me, to me, like, Owain and La, Owain and, um, Inigo, they're bros. Like, I don't care if they're ready or not. For me, those two are bros. This, this, this sound included. Bros. Where, like, for me, it's like, no matter what time, no matter what place, those two are bros. Which is why I freaking love those two. But, um, Inigo by himself, he's cool. He's actually responsible for why I use Azura a lot, because I, I paired up, um, I paired him up with Azura and Revelation. Which for, kind of because I because I like an ego, I forced him. I he forced me to use Azura to the end of the game, because Azura. I'm gonna talk about her for a sec. She is completely useless outside. Like outside her like main function, she is completely useless. I know I mentioned it in the Royals video, but it has to be mentioned again. She's completely useless. But in Revelation, after I made that video, I just forced myself to make to use her, because of an ego. All right, so that's pretty for Nigos. Let's move on. Number two is Ophelia, the daughter of freaking. A Wayne. Now, oh my goodness. How do you, how do you top a Wayne in how you act like theatrical and like how you're this this man of darkness talk about darkness a lot and how do you top this? Ask his daughter. Holy crud. <laughs> She's like way over the top. She's like if if a Wayne's over the top with his speech, Ophelia's more so. And she's not the only one that's like this too. So get ready for that. But um Ophelia, she's one freaking adorable. Like she's so cute. But uh no, but she's also quite decent. Um I haven't really used Ophelia that much, although I did want to use her that much. Because of mostly the supports with Percy, you know, Percy's like pretty cool, and I think I had a pair up with the wire for a moment. But um but when her supports with certain other character, holy crud. But, uh, I'll get to that soon, but freaking... Oh yeah, Mistletane! Right! Uh, Ophelia, when you, when you recruit Ophelia, she gets a unique weapon called Mistletane, which is based on the sword that, you know, Owain gets, kind of his main, um, his signature sword, which is a bit, which is basically the Excalibur to some other dude's sword, called Mistletane, but spelled differently. Holy crud, like, I, I can't believe they actually acknowledged it. Uh, and also they acknowledged, um, um, Ophelia wanted to know where Owain gets all the, all, all these names for weapons, even though he hasn't done any yet, and then it goes to Mistletane, it's like, oh wait, oh right, this, this is actually a name, I put a, I put Mistletane separately from every other name on this list, because I actually used it on an, on a weapon, and then Ophelia's like, I know, let's name this random tome, Mistletane! And then, oh, and then, oh, oh, Wayne is like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, Ophelia, she's cute, she's decent, um, she's over top, and I love her for it. It's amazing.
Number one, why are you not surprised? I mean, this is this is probably the most not surprising, you know, entry in this list. For those of you who have seen Fire Awakening, for those who have seen my Miiverse uh, Miiver's post, for those who know me in general, the counters, this should be obvious. I don't even need to say anything more. It's Selena slash Severa. No said. There's nothing to say, to be honest. Like, you would think there's nothing more to say, but there actually is more to say, because Severa actually has a bit of a change in personality. But not so much, she's still soon today, but she's a lot less so. Especially considering um, characters that she is, there are more characters that she kind of respects more in this game than in Awakening. Because Awakening is really just Kiel, that's it. But um, in Fates, there's Camilla, who's, who she serves under, and she acknowledges, I think during the um, the boot camp um, DLC, where she acknowledges that she doesn't want to be near Camilla when she's angry. Ever. So she acknowledges that, you know, I I'm really good, but there are people that are a lot better than me, so I should just, you know, cool myself with it. And not even that, and and her like wanted to be the best, and also includes Zubaki, who's like a really this perfect man, but she wants to beat him at it. Um, yeah, she's still the kind of character that would challenge others, like challenge to a duel. It's her Yu-Gi-Oh theme here, but uh, she still like, she acknowledged that yeah, there are character characters that should probably be cool with, but uh, yeah, she's a lot less less than today um, than than before, which I kind of like. Um, Kind of like tones her personality down quite a bit. Also, the fact that she's told us a from counterattack. <laughs> she is told us a from counterattack. Where I made Severe and counterattack more and more likable and more, um, you know, she, she doesn't mind being this angry student today this entire time. Unlike an awakening, I made an inner counterattack a lot more likable as the series goes. Heck, even in every almost every single side 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 video. She's never this angry. And I did that on com completely on purpose. And the freaking face comes out and, so and then Severa is sort of like it. Sort of like my counterattack Severa. Including the uh, support I gave her to, to Xander. Because, uh, reason I'll tell you later. But um, he, uh, Xander says I sh something about a hold it joke. And then I was like, that's Phoenix Wright's thing. Wait, Fix runs a counter and Severa's a counter, so they must have interacted, and then Severa must have told a, a hold it joke from Phoenix to Xander, and Xander is like tried to use it on someone, didn't work, and then blah 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 blah. It's totally Severa from counterattack. <laughs> that that is that is my conclusion. But about Xander, I actually in Conquest I paired her up with Xander because she I know she's gonna be my favorite character early on. So who better to support her than the best around, you know the rest of the song, than Xander. He is the big leader type, he is the biggest cheese of Nor, and who better to, you know, marry your daughter off than the ruler, essentially. So, I still play the, the, playing the whole so there's my daughter thing, even in, even in Conquest. And, um... In Revelation, I want I still went through the whole, you know, uh me to Cordelia, then to Severa, then Mary Sibaki, and then get Calderia, then me marrying Caldery to get Kana. I was going I was going on that path, but then I stopped. Um when I stopped when I stopped partway through. I still I still got her Mary Sibaki. But it was worth it. It was still worth it, even though Subaki got nothing out of it. No. Even though Severa got nothing out of it. Uh because, you know, Pegasus Knight's uh, clear class, but that's not important. But uh, she ended, she's still going to be my fair card regardless. And I used her through the entirety of Conquest, and I used her through the entirety of Revelation. Too bad she got killed by the final boss before uh, I did the final blow on it. Kind of sucks. But um, the Severa ended up being my fair character because she is a fair character. She has always been my favorite character. But they have competition.
Holy crud. Holy crud. Every time I look at this character, I say, holy crud, this character. Soleil. Okay. What is to say about Soleil? How am I going to say, what am I going to say about Soleil? Oh, yeah. The fact that her name is pronounced Soleil, not Soleil. Sorry, Soleil from Animal Crossing. Um, she is the daughter of Inigo. Now, in, if Ophelia can be more over the top than Wayne when it comes to her personality, Soleil is exactly the same thing. She, you know, the whole like skirt chasing nonsense that Inigo has been through and gets in trouble for, Soleil is more so. She is a huge skirt chaser. Holy crud. It literally makes her more lesbian than the actual lesbian option in Fates. Heck, the lesbian option in Fates isn't even a big deal. Like, I mean, yeah, I get Rajat, but the, like, all, all she does to start her little obsession with the Avatar is, oh, the Avatar saved her life once. That's it. And then, and then, then Rajat's life is all completely belongs to the Avatar, no one else's. When it got a character that's blatantly lesbian, it's amazing. It, it, it's amazing weird at the same time. Where Niles, he's just a kind of big flirt, regardless. But, um, so not, not really that big of a deal if you're supporting with someone with, uh, with another dude. It's like, whatever. It's like, whatever to him. But, um, uh, Soleil, man. It's a whole different story. Like, the moment, the moment you get Soleil explains everything you need to know about Soleil. Where she, at the end of her paralogue, um, a random girl, a random female villager is like, oh, oh, thanks for saving our lives, and then, and so Leigh's like, oh, cutie, <laughs> hey, wanna go stargazing? <laughs> and then she tells her dad, oh, she said yes, and then, and he was like, well, we gotta learn some more dating tips from you. <laughs> and then all throughout her supports with anyone from from my read, that is, she is completely into cute things. Now let let's 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 put a few steps back for a second. Let's go back to Forest. Now I told I said that for, Forest is the only, the only reason Forest was in the list at all was because of association with the character. This other character I paired him up with Soleil. Cause hey, we got this. They got this. They got this man. This boy really, who acts and looks like a girl. What better character to pair him up with? Then the blatant lesbian, no homo. All of the homo. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's really the best choice. Although the conversation wasn't exactly what I expected. <laughs> wasn't ex what I, what, it wasn't about oh here's this cute guy, let me hang out with him like I would a girl. But no, we talk about hair, like how oh my hair is this way. Can, I like your hair. Can you do my hair like that? But fails horribly. Because her hair isn't meant, isn't meant for curls. But, yeah. They, they, they're definitely more of an item. Especially considering that, from what I've read, Soleil's, every other one of Soleil supports, don't really let her care that much about her marrying era as like a lover. It's more like a there, really, just because the game says so. I, I, I think even to Asagi's, like, she will be like, I wish you were cuter. Because like, she's more into cute things in regards of gender than anything. So, this is no one else is cute. I mean, look at Nations, he's ugly. But, um... Soleil, like, wants to hang on cute things. Enter Ophelia! Who is, like, straight adorbs. She's cute as all heck. And then, Soleil is 100% after her! It's like, she is hounding her! And then the conversations for every single one of them is just one insanity over another. Her B support, like, go Google, no, no, go Google search, um, it's like Soleil and Ophelia B support. Uh, I want to show the picture, but if I want to do it, would be spoiling. Ah, screw it, I'll show it anyway. Oh, yeah. Look at this. This is, uh, Ophelia and Soleil's B support in a nutshell. Ophelia managed to get a spell to, uh, you know, swap their bodies. Intentionally, made for the purpose of so Soleil would realize maybe I shouldn't chase her anymore if I'm like this. But it gets worse! And, and made Soleil really like the body? I mean, like, really, really like the body? And then, uh, 
<laughs> she tells do you see like go off screen it tells her dad hey dad i'm so hey dad and i think dad and like um oh wayne like hey look i'm ophelia now and, and, and ophelia is like oh my goodness no 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 let's not let's not have that and then changes back and then soleil is like ah so, so it's so good too good to be true <laughs> Classic Soleil, oh my goodness, Soleil is so cray cray, but I freaking love her. She is over the top. Like, she is more over the top than Owain. She is more over the top than Arthur. She's more over the top than Ophelia. Holy Christ, she is not subtle. That is like, that's probably the one thing I, I freaking love about Soleil. She is not subtle. Oh, and she did the final blow in Conquest. She literally finished the final boss in Conquest. No big deal. She is really that good. I made her into a master ninja because her dad can naturally go to, to, to master ninja. So, or technically assassin of the game. Uh, so she is an assassin of the game, and due to her, due to her being like the only good ninja in the game, I'm not gonna talk about the other character, the other ninja character you get in Conquest because he's not important at all. Plus, spoilers of Birthright. But um, he, she ended up being my best ninja, and uh. Per, not Percy, uh, Forrest, he's in Butler class, so also, also does a shuriken. It's kind of a good shuriken duo kind of mechanic alongside with everything I just said about, about Soleil and Forrest. They are literally my best children pairing. They're, they're, they're just really amazing. The girly man, the over, over the top, no subtlety lesbian. Okay, so that is all for my list. Holy crud, over 50 minutes of this nonsense. Hopefully I, future me, can like edit some of that out. I mean, maybe he's not. But, um, there you go. That's my Fair Five and Fades characters list. So, will I make a least fair characters list? Probably, because I do, do have a least fair character on this game. And it's not talking to me. So, that is all, guys. See you guys later for some other video. Later!